racing. You wanted the best. You got him for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt. The world of outlaws. Good evening, Waves fans. It is that time of the week once again here on Ultimate Dirt TV. We are live from the Limeland Motorsports Park for the Blue Sphere Corporation and Dirty Old Bastards World of Outlaws Craftsman Sprint Car Series. My name is Brett Wheeler. Thank you for joining us here on this Thursday evening, Friday over here, May the 4th. 4th of May, depends on what you want to go. Like qualifying underway. And here we go, the first couple of cars onto the racetrack. In car number 11, Zach McLaughlin. In car number 73, Alan Simmerno. In the 31 is Tyson Landis. And those are the three cars on track right now. Looking at times coming through, Tyson Landis, quick time, 11, 135. 11, 135 for Landis. McLaughlin with an 11.735. And Alan Samuel with an 11.482. Next couple of cars to so come out of Pit Road. We are at the shortest track we have on the iRacing schedule. In caliber 37, Zane Scott in the triple two. Let's see, this car isn't for sale tonight. It is Western Newell. And in caliber six, Alex Orions. Zane Scott already on his first flying lap around London Motorsports Park. First lap time for Zane Scott. Second quick with an 11. It was an 11.196 waiting. Western New 11344. Arrives with a 13132 and Zane Scott quick time 11107. Alex Arrives with an 11.919 and Western New 11.344. So two groups of qualifying Dallin Dustin and Zane Scott, who we just seen. In that number 37 sits in position number one. In car number 45 out in the Pennzoil entry, it is Robert Scott. And in the next gen fab, Colby's iPad, car number 22, Jason Nygaard. In car number 27, in the nice energy drink, it is Logan Christensen. Logan Christensen in car number 27. Well, you don't see this too often. 
Is it no yard passing a car in qualifying or just generally passing any cars in qualifying? Jason Nygaard, fifth quick with 11.392. On lap one, lap two, I think he may have hit the wall. No, he goes to position three with 11.147. Logan Christians at 16.027. And the 45 of Robert Scott with a 13.567. And I think we're roughly 24. 423 driver, so I don't think we'll see a B main later this evening. you defending World of Atlas Craftsman Sprint Car Series in the DTB DOB Blues for Ultimate Dirt TV number 93. Chris Roberts on to the racetrack along in that mobile one number 77. Aaron Schaefer and in that LNS entry in car number nine, it is Drew Neal. Drew Neal in car number 99, and oh, Robert makes a mistake in one and two, so lap time will not be any decent for the 93. In fact, it's no time. Schaefer, eighth pick of the 12, 224. Drew Neal, 11, 6, 32. Robert with 11.708. Schaefer, with an 11.732 and Drew Neal, 11.632, that was all he's able to get there on his first lap, second lap didn't count as contact with the wall. And let's get our next group of cars out on the racetrack in car number 92, Mike Keegan. In car number 57, Luke Yanez, Luke Yanez in the 57. And in the 127, it is Stephen Hill. So Keegan putting the car on the front row of last week's Knoxville race. So what kind of lap times he can do? 11.638. Luke Yanez with the 12.077. And Stephen Hill with 11.683. Keegan, fourth quick with an 11.341. Yanez, 11.961. And Stephen Hill up to position number six with an 11.351. 11.351. Sits in position number six. So at the moment, 15 cars have taken a time. In car number 21 on the racetrack on the back straightaway, Tyler Henselman. In car number 39, Jimmy Procash. And in the number 97, it's Matthew Henninger. Matthew Henninger in car number 97. Green flag out for this group. Group number 7, I believe this is. Tyler Henselman right now looking at a 12.258. Prakash now with a 12.580. Henninger with a 12.290. Henselman looking at 11.808, I believe. 11.806. Prakash jumps the 13th quick with 11.910. And Henninger with a 12.290. That was his fastest lap. So we're live just on Facebook tonight. Tonight we're going to have two races. Two races tonight. And there'll be two... Excuse me. Two different streams. So make sure you hit the like and follow button on Facebook for Ultimate Dirt TV. You get a YouTube as well. Go to youtube.com forward slash Ultimate Dirt TV. Justin Zapp. In car number three, in car number 257, in the UW Motorsports entry, it is Anthony Lopresto. And in the 123, in the bad boy buggy, Chevrolet, Tony Stewart, paint scheme, and Donnie Stewart, David, Mo David Mosia. Lopresto jumps to position number four. Zap with a 12, 4, 6, 4. Lopresto only the other one that, but it was 
Nosey out with an 11.936. Justin Zapp with a 12.464. And our last two cars. So 23 cars in attendance for race number one, round number eight, the Blue Sphere Corporation and Dirty Old Bastards. Lord of Outlaws Craftsman Sprint Car Series in the Triple Zero, Stephen Herzberg. And in car number 53, Tom Prokash. Prakash with a 12.789. Herzberg with an 18.009. And Prakash looking to improve on lap number two. Will not. Will sit position number 20th. So that will wrap up qualifying here for the World of Outlaws Craftsman Sprint Car Series. And the Blue Sphere Corporation and Dirty Old Bastards. Round eight race number one. You see the cloudy skies. Now, new re rule, uh, restart rule in effect as of this week. So instead of waiting for the green light, you're going to watch where the number 93 will be rolling. This is where the leaders can fire any time from there. Right there in the middle of turns three and four. Just where that tire on the light post is on the outside. Anywhere between there and the green flag, that's when the leader can fire. So don't have to wait for the green light if they don't want to. So as long as they get to that pole and that tyre, they can fire off. So drivers just getting a, a bit of a, a toll on where it is if they were if they were unsure unsure sorry uh, of the rule. So qualifying done and dusted, Zane Scott will set quick time with an 11.107 Tyson Landis. Second quick with an 11.135, Jason Nygaard third with an 11.147, Lopresto 11.255, Mike Keegan 11.341, Western Newell 11.344, Stephen Hill, 11.351, Zach McLaughlin, 11.356. And we jump back to a little bit over a tenth to Alan Samuel in ninth with 11.482. And let's take a look at our Ultimate Dirt TV starting with... <laughs> Starting on the pole in car number 37, it's Zane Scott, who's outside the 31 of Tyson Landis. Starting out of position 3, the 22 of Jason Nygaard lined up alongside the 257 of Anthony Lopresto. At a position number 5, the 92 of Mike King will line up alongside the triple 2 of Weston Newell. At a position 7, the 127 of Stephen Hill. Alongside him in row number four, Zach McLaughlin. Row five inside, car number 73, Alan Samuel lines up alongside the nine of Drew Neal. We go back to Aaron Schaefer in the 77, alongside him. In fact, Chris Roberts in the 93, then you go back to Aaron Schaefer. Row seven, Tyler Hentelman and Jimmy Prakash. Alex Orion's David Mosier. Luke Yanez, Matthew Henning, uh, Justin Zapp, Tom Prakash, Robert Scott, and Logan Christensen and Stephen Herzberg rounds out our field. So 40 laps on the board for race number one. Who will take out the first part of this two race round? Here at the Limeland Motorsport Park, ladies and gentlemen, it is showtime here at Limeland. Green, green, green. There we go. Scott got a great start.
Drivers trying to make their way through turns one and two. Nygaard and Lander side by side. We go into three and four. Western New working his way on the outside. Here comes the Presto. La Presto up to third. Nygaard in second. Early caution out. Logan Christensen in that 27. Let's have a look at our ultimate third TV replay. Just to see what happened with two is the driver. Just caught the back end of that one. He went upside down and I know. No. in front of Schaefer. One to green guys, tighten up, single file, leader may fire anytime after that first light pole in the middle of three and four after the pace truck pulls off. White flag left number 43, pace truck is pulled off the and out. there green we go, green, green flag is back out. Here at Lionel Air Motorsports Park. Oh, Zane Scott, there might be something wrong on that car. I don't know if it's on that car, whether it's his wheel and pedals right now. But Nygaard going straight to the lead through turns three and four. Lopresto back there and oh, yellow, yellow. yellow flag is out. And might have been the 57 here of Luke Yannis. Let's have a look. So it looks like we're going to skip the replays on that one. Well, Jason Nygaard is your race leader. Roger that one. Here we go. Lights are out 46. on the pace truck. White flag number 46. And Jason Nygaard has command of the race lead right now. Green flag, green flag. The flag is back out of Nygaard. We'll get us back on the way through the middle. Trying to slide up to the cushion. Rides the cushion. Now here comes Zane Scott. But your race leader is Jason Nygaard. Yellow, yellow, yellow. three and four. Yeah, yellow yet again. It looks like it's the nine this time of Drew Neal. Oh, okay, there it is. There's the culprit. 73. Alan Samoa. like a cannon and Drew Neal nowhere to go on that one so this track produced some crazy racing on Tuesday night if you haven't looked at it check it out in our videos on Facebook we will have it uploaded to YouTube today or tomorrow Back on the way, Jason Nygaard, Zane Scott, and Anthony Lapresta. Your top three right now. Here after Tyson, Lannis, and Western Newell as well in the triple two. Lapresto on the top of the racetrack now. Comes back underneath Zane Scott. There was a little contact there. Scott pulled a big wheel stand down the back straight away. Oh, Lapresto and oh, Scott. 
horrible horrible walk for the 37. There was contact twice. There was the initial contact, that was the wheel stand. And Scott. Oh, we don't know where to go on that one, unfortunately. This is really a get up on the wheel type of racetrack. The cushion, it's deadly, it's fast. But my God, the risk you take. Nothing more gets the heart racing when you're inches away from the wall, riding the cushion, putting the right rear on the cushion, and then racing other cars. So Nygaard, still your race leader, Lopresto and Landis, your top three, Keegan, Weston Ewell, Stephen Hill, Chris Roberts, Zach McLaughlin, Alan Simone, Alex Orion's round out our top ten, we're back on the way, and up we go. Nygaard is going to have his hands full right now with Lopresto, and the yellow is out. Uh-oh, there's a couple of cars saying so Scott and Drew Neal stuck on the top of turns one and two, Drew Neal. So, two separate incidents here. So there's the, the nine of Drew Neal. So, oh, okay, so I think both drivers, oh, both drivers just got caught up on the wall. It's just a single car Rex, unfortunately. There we go. Pace truck in. Leader can fly at any time from now. And he will do that. He will get us back underway. Here at Blimele Motorsports Park. Oh, there's contact in the back. And it's just... I'll tell you right now, race control. We'll be PI double five ED right now. The 11 of Zach McLaughlin. We might get that car back on all four of it. He's going to be a lap down. There's probably some damage onto that race car. So at the moment, our fastest lap of the race is the 37 of Zane Scott with an 11.828. Jason Nygaard and Anthony Lopresto, the only two other drivers that hit a or an 11 second lap time. Oh, white flag lap 58. White flag go lap 58. Go a long way, guys. start with 30 to go. There you go, race control. Tell them, come on, guys. We've only completed 10 laps at the moment. Yes, the laps will tick on by very, very quickly. My God, got a great restart on oh, Lopresto. Landis now into the wall. He gets it back going now. Roberts to his inside. In fact, Roberts has gone past him. Keegan oh, right on the go. bottom. Now on this out yet again. And 123 of David Mo uh, Moser. Bad boy, buggy's off road Chevrolet curb record number one, two, three. The old Donnie Shots paint scheme back on pit road. So, unfortunately, the four tens are proving to be just a little bit of a handful. 
for some of these drivers right now. Back to green flag, racing a distance at this time by. The lights are out on the pace truck. They can just settle down into a rhythm. Yes, the track is tricky. Yeah, it's tough. Flag. It's technical. And it is just, you know, balls to the wall, hammer down. Man, you've really just got to manhandle that cushion. Nigar no, now feeling the pressure from Lopresto in one and two. Speaking of two, here comes the triple two of West Here, In fact, he lost a ton of ground. Three turns, one and two, but now look at Nygaard. Making his way up on the top of the cushion right now. Three turns, one and two. Pulled about a car length from Anthony Lopresto. Right now, look at your times. Nygaard, 11, 7, 1, 8. Similar lap time to when Nygaard and Lopresto. In fact, Western Hill was the quicker out of the three on that previous lap, but the 22 right now. Oh, Kai! Upside down! Do they all make it through? Yes, they do! Oh, boy! The triple zero, Steven Herzberg. Upside down, so we've got a couple of laps there in the books. This makes for an interesting race. Jason Nygaard as a pro driver for the World of Outlaws Craftsman Sprint Car Series. In fact, starting this Monday night, I believe. So good luck to the UW Motorsports Camp, I believe they got three, maybe four drivers in that one. Here we go. Lights are out on this pace truck. My guard keeping up with the pace truck this time by. Waiting to fire. Green flag is back out onto the speedway. Once again, your top three, ride the cushion. Keegan through the middle in one and two. Landis work on the top of the racetrack as well, as is Chris Roberts. Samuel behind him, and also, uh, uh Stephen Hill. Oh, no, this contact with Western Yule goes upside down. He somehow got back on all fours. He kept it going, and there's no yellow. Oh, Nygaard upside down. Let's have a look at this. So the first time I got a run on Nygaard, caught his left free. He came down the way track west and you went upside down. And then Nygaard just gets to the wall in turns one and two and that's uh, heartbreaking for the 22 so we'll listen in to race control when one of the green guys take nuts in the foul white flag lap 67 so 21 to go there you go, 21 remain here in race number one. We have four weeks left after this race. Green's out, green flag, green flag. After this round, I should say, and Lopresto gets the jump on the rest of the field. Keegan through turns one and two on top of the race track, as is Tyson Lenz. Now, this has got to be a little bit tough for Tyson Lenz. He's missing his front wing. So there's no downforce on the front of that race car. And he must he must be having that wing a fair way forward to be circulating like that at the moment. Roberts in fourth. So a 
race leader, the Presto. So start to pull away from your second place driver of Mike Keegan. Landis in third. Great battle going on for fifth at the moment. I think Weston Yule's in that one. Yeah, he is. And the triple two, Alan Summer, Alex Orion, Stephen Hill. Job at the moment, they're in lap traffic right now. Keegan's gotten around the outside. Oh, Prakash, and now, oh, McLaughlin got out of shape in front of your race leader. But he was aware to the fact that this may just happen. So we're trying to listen to race control. We've got uh, 10, what did they say? Lap 5, lap 67, I think it was. So Keegan in the 92 starting to close the gap on your race leader as they go through turns at one and two right now. Christensen about to get put down another lap from your race leader. And you just see the 92, the orange and white machine, slowly starting to catch up to the rear bumper of the race leader, 257, Anthony Lopresto. Keegan in the 92. Has he got some 10 to run? As they come out of turn number four to one and two. Henselman now the next car to go a lap down. He's in position number ten. So Lopresto is working the top of the racetrack. The yellow is out. Nice run there, guy. Let's have a look. Maybe the 97? out for a while. Didn't quite catch the lead for that portion. on who that one was for but we'll continue to get back after this one I think we've got nine laps to run have a look at the car they're looking up at our cameraman not sure why they're looking at me but hey this car's on the racetrack got nine to go Read him. here we go nine to run it is confirmed by race control Henselman, no, you're not in second. Henselman looking to finish five races this week. Green flag, green five flag. in a row. Green flag is out. Henselman pulls to the inside to let the leaders on by. Now, now that Lopresto's had a break and he's got a clear, somewhat of a clear track in front of him, can he hang on for the remaining eight laps? Keegan in the 92 starting to close the gap just ever so slightly. Lopresto got a great run through turns one and two. Three and four, he's struggling with right now. Seven remain for your leader in the 257. The 92 of Keegan, he was there with him, but now he's just starting to fall off a bit. Lopresto rolling that cushion, battle on for third right now between Roberts and Henselman. Uh, no, uh, Roberts and Landis. I think we had five to run, maybe four to run this time by. Lap traffic one more time. Now, according to the calculation, I think we've got three to run, and this will heat up in the last two and a bit last because there is lap cars in front of them right now. That was two to go. One and a half remain for your leader, Lopresto. Oh, there's three wide. The white flag is out. Oh, the race leader. Contact with the slower car. Here comes Keegan on the outside. What a move by the Presto for the race lead. The Keegan throws the slider. No, there it is. The job done by Anthony Lopresto. Third will go to Tyson Landis. Woo, boy. That... 
was epic towards the end. It took us a while, but we got there. Oh man, oh man. Race one in the books, and it is completed by Anthony Lapresta, Mike Keegan, and Tyson Landis. Are our top three. Let's see how many of these drivers we have. And it looks like we're going to start with the 31 here. And we'll bring her up in Discord for a quick chat. And coming home in third place in the 31, Tyson, congratulations. Uh, a crazy race to say the least. Yeah, it was a crazy race. I mean, there's contact at the, at the beginning of the race, middle of the race, all over. Yeah, it's a good car speed out in qualifying. You started on the outside of the front row, and uh, you know you lost the you lost the lead there at the start, but uh, you know you you managed to stay inside of the top five all night. So, I mean, this track it was it looked to be very tough, especially running that cushion. Yeah, it was just super slick, and then it would just get right to the top, and the groove was right in the fence. If you hit it just right, you would gain a lot of momentum and really get it around a lot of people. Well, you get a, a podium here in race number one, no doubt. Uh, there's some uh, people you want to thank. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, J-Skins, their team, for helping me out, and uh, also uh, Ag Trucking for employing me. If you're looking for a job, hit us up. And also for you guys for putting this on, the DOB and Chris and everybody. All right, there we have it. Tyson Landis comes away with a third place. We'll have a chat to our race winner, Anthony Lopresto. Anthony, you start on the outside of the second row. Uh, you had some contact with a couple of drivers there, but uh, it was a crazy race. Yeah, definitely. That was a lot of fun there. Um... Hate it for uh, Zane Sky. I got loose off uh, off the four there and kind of got came down into him and took him out a little bit. So uh, hate it for him. That was unintentional for sure. But uh, yeah, fun race for the most part. I got into a lot of traffic there at the end, and um, you know as you saw there towards the end, it didn't take long to get into a lot of traffic. So if we'd have had you know just a couple more greens, I think it would have been been even better. Yeah. So looking forward to the next one for sure. You talk about lap traffic there, and, and as you said, at the end, man, there, there were three wide in front of you, you know, coming to the white flag. I mean, yeah, what goes through your mind when, you know, you got uh, a guy like Keegan, um, you know, he was starting to close in on those last couple of laps, and all of a sudden, you know, you got you know guys in front of you battling for their positions, but, you know, you're in the race lead. Where do you go? W what's your thoughts? Um, mainly just out there having fun, really. That's, that's when it's the most fun. I mean... You know, when we're out there just racing, running laps by ourselves, it's not as, you know, you could fall asleep doing that, to be honest with you. So when we get into lap traffic at the end of the race like that, even though as the leader you don't really want to see all the lap cars, it makes it a lot more interesting for everybody watching. It makes it a lot more interesting for me, um, you know, and the guys behind me. So definitely like to see that as much as possible. So it was definitely really cool. And um, just glad it didn't didn't, uh, didn't cost me there for sure. Well, well done on the win here uh, for race number one. Uh, no doubt you'll give him hell in race number two, but uh, before we let you get out of here, I know there's plenty of people you want to thank. Yeah, i got to thank uh, all my teammates at EW Motorsports. got to thank our sponsors at Ultimate Dirt TV, Next Gen Fab, Colby's Eye Paints. And uh, i got to thank DLB for putting this thing on. And uh, you, Brett, for casting this thing. You do a hell of a job. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, see you guys in the next race. All right, there we have it. Anthony Lopresto comes away with the win here in race number one. Well, just like the 360s on a Tuesday night, this was crazy, to say the least. It had everything. Yes, it had some cautions uh, at the start, but once we finally got going, uh, we've seen some good green flag laps there uh, with only, I think, one or two cautions in the last 20 or 25 laps. So hats off to these drivers who finally got uh, some sort of a hold of this racetrack. The shortest dirt track we have on the iRacing service. Once again, we do want to thank the Blue Sphere Corporation and Dirty Old Bastards for allowing uh, Ultimate Dirt TV to cover the action. Make sure you go follow uh, Blue Sphere Corporation and Dirty Old Bastards on Facebook along with Ultimate Dirt TV. You can check out our YouTube channel as well. All of our content from Facebook uh, is uploaded to YouTube. Well, race number one in the books for round number eight. We have another race here at Limeland Motorsports Park in the World of Outlaws Craftsman Sprint Car Series. 
This time it's going to be at night time, so the lights will get turned on. And we'll see how these drivers react to race number two. Who will find victory lane? We'll find out in about 20 minutes time. We're going to be live at a little bit uh, quarter past the next hour. So make sure you come back and watch race number two. My name is Brett Wheeler. We'll see you shortly.